speaks to us and has spoken to us down through thousands of years now. This same message that, that is spoken of throughout the God's book, the Holy Bible. Genesis chapter 12, beginning of verse 3 says, I will bless those. I'm going to back up to verse 2. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Amen. Just stand with me this morning and would you join me as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel, the Jewish family and Jewish nation. God called them Israel. Lord, we are, we are asking you about the apple of your eye. We are bringing the nation of Israel before you, O oh God. We pray, Lord, for divine big angel protection all over that land, all over those people. Lord, wherever our brothers and sisters who are Jewish, whether it is by biological descent or whether it is by both biological and spiritual practice, we pray protection over them, God, this evil monster, this evil demon that it has come out against them over and over and over and over. We bind it. We command it to leave. We, we bind it and command it to go back to hell where it belongs, to leave Israel alone. May, Lord, may all of our enemies, we, we know, Lord, that this, this great conflict is coming that will bring about the end, will bring about the salvation of Israel and of millions and, and billions of Jews, Lord, that will be saved in the, in the last days <laughs> as they turn to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that we know that your plan is being fulfilled. And we pray, Lord, for protection. We pray for favor. We pray for blessing and anointing. on the Jewish family, wherever they find themselves, and on the nation of Israel, we pray for protection for Jerusalem. Lord, we pray for protection for Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, Benjamin. Lord, and, and we pray, Lord, for all the others to be protected, God. Protected, protected. Your favor. Your favor, God. May all of our enemies lay down their weapons and, and, and go away. In Jesus' name. Lord, and, and I pray for a turning in America. All of the enemies of Israel in America, I pray, Lord, their hearts turn to love Israel, to pray for Israel, to support and protect Israel, all of their hearts to be changed. Whether they are a leader in a leadership position or not, Lord, we pray that all of America will understand that God's blessing comes on those who bless Israel. God's judgment comes on those who curse Israel. Turn the hearts, Lord, not of America, but yes, Lord, but of the rest of the nations, Lord, turn the hearts of them toward Israel. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, friends. Thank you. You may be seated. And I hope that this 
this week as you're praying for Rosie that you will continue to pray Israel. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Galatians chapter 5 with me? And let's look at, I just felt so impressed this morning to bring to you a message from this chapter in the Bible about seven steps to living in victory. How many of you want to live in victory? <laughs> uh, hopefully that all of us raised our hand, whether out, outward, physically, inward, hopefully all of us, that God wants all of us to live in victory. Amen? Amen. So the first step to victory from Galatians chapter 5 is, at least in my perspective, is to stand firm in the liberty of your faith in Jesus. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled with a yoke of bondage. Important step, important first step to stand in that liberty. And, and in our faith in Jesus, friends. This, this freedom that this verse is talking about is the freedom we have in Jesus. That because of Jesus, the old covenant was one of bondage, sin, and death. The new covenant, which you and I are a part of, when we put our faith in Jesus, we're a part of that new covenant that gives us freedom, rights, and life, praise the Lord, and victory, praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that when Messiah came, he would bring liberty from the curse of sin and all of its effects, and he has come, and he has given us liberty and freedom, praise the Lord. And the Bible tells us that it is for liberty that Christ has made us free. And we should walk in that freedom. Amen? The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit brings us freedom, brings us victory. And, and we want to walk in that great freedom. And as we stand firm in that freedom, friends, Jesus did everything necessary. There is nothing else you can do. Jesus paid it all. Jesus did it all so that you and I could walk in victory. He doesn't want you and I to walk in shame and, and guilt because he paid for all of our sins and all of our shame and all of our guilt. Praise the Lord. It's done. You, There's nothing else to do except say thank you, Jesus, and receive the wonderful gift of the freedom and victory that he has given us. The second step from Galatians chapter 5 is to maintain your standing in God's grace and obey the truth. And friends, uh, we have uh, in your program this morning, we have an outline of, of the message from the Word of God. If you want to use that and fill in the blanks and jot some notes, please feel free. If you don't, that's fine too. Or if you want to turn it over and, and make some notes, uh, that would be great. Sound good? Amen. So second step, maintain your standing in God's grace and obey the truth. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Anybody else ever felt that way? I was I was doing really good here. And then something crazy happened. Anybody else? I all of a sudden I turned around and looked around and I was doing stuff I promised myself I'd never do. Can I get a witness? Amen, James. That's right. You ran well. Who hindered you? Well, we know what who hindered us. They had been doing really well for a time, and the answer to what happened was they, they, they let go of their standing in God's grace. And they stopped obeying the truth. And that those two, those two areas are where Satan is going to constantly come at you. He's going he's gonna to speak his native language, which is the, the language of lies, and he's going to try to tell you that, you that you have to do something to deserve God's grace. And that is a lie. God's grace is a free gift to us, brothers and sisters. It cannot be earned or deserved. It is a free gift from God. Nothing you and I can do or will do uh, except obeying the truth and, and, and standing in that grace 
when the devil comes and attacks you and lies to you, you just tell him to go back to hell where he belongs. Because you're standing in the grace of God. And you're going to obey the truth. Now, friends, there are times, uh, I don't know about you, but there are times in my life where I have to grab myself around the neck and say, John, you are going to stand in the grace of God. You're going to obey the truth. I don't care what it takes. It's what you're going to do. Anybody else? No. Come on. This is real life here. We we don't do foamy baloney here at Portland Nipple Church. We talk about real life. And there are times, even for us who've known the Lord uh, since we were very, very young, where the enemy tries to trap us and trick us and pull all kinds of shenanigans on us, then we have to say, no, standing in grace, what Jesus did for me is what it's all about. Satan, you can take your little bag of lies and tricks and get out of here. Amen? You know, the Bible tells us that that we are no match for the devil on our own, but in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we have victory, we have power, we have authority, friends. And so I think it's okay to talk to the devil every now and then. He needs a talking to every now and then. He needs a reminder about the blood of Jesus and the grace of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, verse 10 says, I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you. This is, this is one of my favorite verses. He who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. Wow. Anybody else in the room ever had somebody trouble you? Mm -hmm. You know, it all, it all starts in the, in the war room of hell. But the word of God tells us that judgment is coming for those who trouble Christians. I have another one that kind of goes along that line. Like it's called hot places in hell for men who mess with other people's wives. Judgment. And vice versa, yeah. Hot places in hell for women who mess with other people's husbands. Hear me. Amen. Because the Bible says that there's judgment coming for those who trouble you. And, uh, you know, we, we don't sell, we don't rejoice in that. We don't celebrate that. It's just one of those, this is, this is what's happening. And God helps us maintain our standing in his grace. And, and he helps us obey the truth. He will be there to help you obey the truth. There will be times when you'll have to look your flesh in the, in the eye. And we'll talk about that in a, in a few moments. But there will be times when you'll just have to take authority over your flesh. Amen. You know, and sometimes taking that authority is when we say, okay, uh, you haven't been uh, on your prayer bones enough lately. Time to get on your prayer bones. You know what I'm talking about? Time to get, get on your face before God in prayer and get back in the word of God. Amen. So maintain your standing in God's grace. <laughs> Obey the truth. The third step to victory in Galatians 5 is walk in the spirit. Galatians 5, 15 and 16, I say then, Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Oh boy. Do you see the contrast there? Yeah. You're either walking in the spirit or you're fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. Right? And this verse encourages us to walk in the spirit and to live the way the Holy Spirit leads us to. And there are a couple of examples here. Verse 13 says, to serve one another in love. When we're walking in the Spirit, friends, we'll serve one another in love. Not just believers, but, but other people, one another, right? And then verse 14 says, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. One of the great commandments, right? The Holy Spirit helps us as we walk in the Spirit. Uh, we love people, and the largest part of God's character and, and the all-encompassing in, part of the character of God is love, right? And so the Holy Spirit will always lead us to do things that are loving God and loving people. <laughs> now, I know that sometimes we, we're okay with the God part, but it's the people part that we struggle with, right? Go ahead and smile at me just a little bit. Praise the Lord. God helps us. Love the unlovely. Love the knuckleheads in our lives. Love those that are difficult to love. 
as we walk in the Spirit, the Lord helps us do that. And, and he helps us to not fulfill the desires of the flesh, friends. The fourth step from Galatians chapter 5 is be led by the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 18 says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. We are, we are in this conflict as believers that involves our whole person, our mind, our body, and our spirit. Are you with me so far? It is a struggle sometimes. It is a conflict, and and uh, and it's important that we let the Holy, that we surrender to the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead us to the right answers. He's going to lead us to the right behaviors. He's going to lead us to the right thoughts and words and motives, right? And as, especially as we are in the Word and in prayer, the Holy Spirit's going to guide us and help us. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I let my flesh get out of control, things get really ugly really quick. <laughs> Pastor John. I heard you. I heard you. Hey, till, they, till the trumpet sounds or the, they throw dirt in my face, uh, I'm going to fight this flesh until I see Jesus. And I'm believing God for victory over this stinking bag of bones, hallelujah, and over the tricks and traps of the devil for me and for you. Amen. Because I want to be led by the Spirit. I don't want this flesh to lead me. It's, it's always disappointed me. Can I get a witness? But when the Spirit is leading, there is victory. There is glory. There is there are signs, wonders, and miracles. The fifth step to victory in Galatians 5. And sometimes we've got to buckle our seatbelt a little bit when we come to this one. It's called crucify your flesh. Everybody, everybody turn to somebody and smile at them and, and say to them, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Go ahead and kill that old dog. Kill that old boy. Kill that old girl. Crucify your flesh. <laughs> oh, thanks, you guys. Galatians chapter 5, beginning verse 19. Are you ready? Got your seatbelt on? And verse 24. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not Inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And then verse 24. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh and its passions. How many of you know that that, that process of crucifying the flesh is a process? Really? It is a process. But maybe we could even say that just as sanctification is a process right. that our, our holiness, the outward expressions of holiness is a process. We, we don't get A's in the class the first day, mm -hmm. but as we work on it, our grade goes. <laughs> well, I was going to say that, that last one, but we'll, we'll use a D right here. Our grade goes from a D to an A, A plus. As we continue to grow and walk in the Lord, it is a process, ladies and gentlemen. It is not overnight. The crucifixion of the flesh. And every time that old ugly thing raises its head up, we just have to slam it back down in the name of Jesus. Take authority over it by the name and blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The crucifixion of our flesh is a major part of our victory. You could, you could say that as 
dead as your flesh is, the greater the victory you will have. In Jesus' name. And God helps us, friends. He doesn't say, okay, here's the, here's the owner's manual. We'll see you when you die. <laughs> no, he's right there with us, helping us, strengthening us, and giving us the direction that we need. Praise the Lord. And friends, part of that process of crucifixion goes like this. There are things we don't allow ourselves to do anymore. Right. There are things we walk away from. There are things that we don't allow ourselves to say anymore. That's right. and, and from time to time, ladies and gentlemen, we just got to turn back to Deuteronomy chapter 20 and refresh the Ten Commandments and, and start right there. And then go to what Jesus said were the two greatest commandments, that of loving God and loving people. And the Lord helps us do that. We walk away from that, that former life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. When you put your faith in Jesus, you became a new person. And there are days when it doesn't feel like it. Can I get a witness? There are moments when, when we are being beat up by the enemy and sometimes by our flesh and by other people that we just have to take authority over that and remind ourselves by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm the new creation. I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to this other garbage anymore. I belong to Jesus. And he is my Lord and he's my Savior and, and his word is my direction, man. Praise the Lord. I'm a new creation. And we are made new, friends. I'm going to take you to Romans chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. For the death that he died, remember we're talking about crucifying the flesh, okay? For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, friend, as we walk with the Lord and as we grow in him, God invites us and helps us to be dead to sin. Those temptations come, those sins come, and, and sometimes they lie to you and the devil comes as an angel of light or a devil in a blue dress, a devil in blue jeans. Yeah. The devil on the screen. Other other examples. And the Lord helps us to say, no, nope, uh -uh. I'm dead to that. I'm dead to that. No longer, that, that no longer lives in me. That no longer pulls at me. That no longer controls me. I, I want to be, I am, not want to be, I am controlled by the Holy Spirit. I'm controlled by Jesus, my Lord, and his wonderful work. And that is how we get the victory. Jesus. Step number six from Galatians chapter five says, let the fruit of the spirit flow from you. Galatians chapter five, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such there is no law. It is a stark contrast between the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, God's will for you and I to have victory in our lives is to let the fruit of the Spirit flow from us. This lifestyle of the fruit of the Spirit living out is the character of the Lord Jesus being worked in our lives and then flowing out of our lives. Amen. If you want a, if you want a list of, of attitudes and behaviors, here it is. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I, I think most of us would like to write that on the inside of our eyelids so that we see it more often. Praise the Lord again. Or, or on the fridge or in a three by five card in the shower. This is, this is my life now. 
This is my life. I'm going to let the fruit of the Spirit flow through me. I don't. I, it gets ugly when the when the fruit of my flesh is out there. I don't want that out there anymore. I want the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> and the Lord helps us do that, friends. Amen. And when we let the fruit of the Spirit flow out of our lives, we live in victory. And God wants us to live in victory. That's why he gave us the fruit of the Spirit. To hold and to cling to. The last one that I want to share with you this morning, step to victory, number seven. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. To live your life in the Spirit, it says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. I want to give you four really quick parts vital parts to living your life in the spirit. Are you ready? And I want to encourage you to write these down in your notes, if you will. Four vital parts to living your life in the spirit. And the first one is prayer. Can I tell you this morning that, that now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I should die before I wake. Pray the Lord is according to Lord my soul today. I haven't prayed that one in a long time. Can you, as you probably can tell. <laughs> and so, so if that's all of your prayer life, you're in trouble. <laughs> you with me? Yeah. We're talking vital parts of a life lived in the spirit. Prayer. Number one, intimacy, prayer and intimacy with God. Not only will bed will bedtime prayers only not work, uh, prayers at meals uh, is if that's the limit of your prayer life. Friends, please, please, I want to be real positive. Please start expanding your prayer life. Amen. I. I, here's what I use. I, I The running track of the Lord's Prayer is my running track. Is the outline I use to spend lots of time in prayer. And I want to encourage you to start using that. The outline of the Lord's Prayer. Um, in order to live in the Spirit, friends, you and I need a prayer life that starts first thing in the morning and, and uh, maybe goes into a pause mode when your head hits the pillow at night. <laughs> and then and then you want to pray for and look forward to the time when you wake up praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues, because the Holy Spirit has put some burden on your heart. Amen. Other times you, you wake, you're awakened in the night with a name or a face or a need. Uh, that's also a part of the prayer life, friends, but it's all about intimacy with God. To live that life in the Spirit. Intimacy with God. Praying without ceasing, as the Apostle Paul says. Constantly in that attitude of prayer every day, all day, in Jesus' name. And that will lift you and strengthen you. Amen. The second thing that's vital for living your life in the Spirit is the Word of God. The Word of God, the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, uh, reading, studying, memorizing, meditating on the Word of God. It, it, God wants it. God gave it to us, friends, not so we would uh, just read a little bit every now and then or, or uh, read a, a little bit when things fall apart but that we would know the word so well that it would be in every, every part of our speech, every part of our thoughts, every part of our actions, the word of God. Uh, and it's, it's so important, ladies and gentlemen, that we have more of the Bible, more of God's word in us. In fact, I've found that the more, it's like the more you, you read it, the more appetite you have for more of it. <laughs> And you want, the more you read it, the more you want to read it. And the more you want to study it and memorize it. It is alive and it's new and it's wonderful and it's vital. 
for walking in the Spirit. The third thing that I think is also vital is your fellowship and relationship with other Christians. Your spiritual life needs the strengthening and the encouragement that happens when you spend time with other believers. You know, we are, we are called as, as believers to meet together, and the Bible says that we should meet together more often as we see the last days, the end coming. And there are times when we gather in the large groups, there are times that we, we want to encourage people to gather in small groups and home groups, coffee shops, to encourage one another and to build one another up. We need that. We are desperate for that. And, and it's so important to your spiritual life. Amen. It's vital. We, we have uh, relationships with people that don't know Jesus, and we need to. Come on. We need to have relationships with people that don't know Jesus, right? right. Everybody say, right. But, but that is a relationship. We're talking about fellowship with other believers, that, that where, you, where you encourage each other deeply and spend time together, pray together, to encourage one another in the word, in, in prayer, in fellowship. Share what new insights the Lord has shared with you in the last week from the word of God and from your time in prayer in Jesus' name. It, it saddens me. Can I just can we just talk for a moment? It breaks my heart when I when I talk with people and I seem to figure out or the Holy Spirit whispers to me that that they are starving for Christian fellowship. That they have nobody that they feel like they can call on or nobody that they feel like they can go to friends and and I pray that, that's, that, that you don't feel that way. I pray that you have people in your life that you can talk to as a brother or sister in Christ, somebody that you can trust, somebody that you can open up to, and somebody you can share with that, can, that you can pray with them and they can pray with you. Amen? And, and can I just, while on this subject, can I just encourage you that when you are fellowshipping with other believers, don't make it all about you. Don't, don't, don't start rehearsing your surgeries. But, but make it about them. How can I pray for you? How can I encourage you? How can I help carry the law? What, are, what struggles are you having that I can come alongside and pick them up and carry them with me. I want to be a brother. I want to be a sister. I want to be a, a friend as we share together. Praise the Lord. The fourth and the last thing that is vital for walking in the Spirit, living your life in the Spirit, is your ministry of serving God and His church. To live in the spirit, you got to have a ministry. And sometimes it is so simple and easy, right? And we we all share that together. And thank you for that. Hey, uh, I just had a squirrel moment. Will you, will you let me have a squirrel moment? I, if, if possible. Squirrel, <laughs> I want you to go. I want you to go out these doors today, and I want you to see the beautiful paint job on these double doors. Uh, our people, some of our people, who have big crowns in heaven, uh, painted those doors, and they're going to start painting some more of our doors. But, but, and I share that with you to say. What a wonderful team. You know, we have we have some wonderful people. You know, when you walk into our bathrooms, at least most of them this morning <laughs> still smell really clean because there's a wonderful person. <laughs> some of you know which one I'm talking about. Okay, all right, let's go on. Let's move on. 
Let's, move, let's get out of that squirrel moment. And let's go on. But we have we have people that that clean our bathrooms and, and clean our church. We've got a couple of young men that do yard work and, and do cleaning as well as a lady in our church that God bless her makes those bathrooms smell so good and shine. And others of you, you know, teach and lead and help and do all the things that you do. Talked with a couple of really nice brothers yesterday that are going to uh, replace the old T-111 that's falling apart on this side of our building. Probably was put up in the 30s or 40s maybe. It lived well. It served the Lord well. It served this old girl well for a long time. But it's going to get some new party plank. And, and uh, it's going to be looking so nice. Praise the Lord. Because we believe that the house of God should look better than our homes. <laughs> should smell better than our homes. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, we're going to. We're going to come back to reality here for get away from the squirrel moments. But everybody has been given unique gifts by God. You have unique gifts that God wants to use through you to touch and bless and help other people. Amen. Let's pray together right now.